Welcome to Demystifying Bio 199 and Undergrad Bio Research. This presentation is given to you today by the UCI BioSci Student Affairs Office, and we're just going to give you a quick glimpse as to what Bio 199 is and how you guys can get involved as BioSci students here at UCI. So we've all seen these types of photos of students working in labs, students even being able to present their research um, at different symposiums. And so how do you get there as a student? So first, before we go into that, what is Bio 199? So Bio 199 gives you an opportunity to perform supervised undergraduate research alongside a mentor, polish your basic lab or clinical skills, participate in on-campus student research conferences like Europe Surf or Excellence, and even allow you to become a published writer. In addition, it allows you to further your interests in a particular field and get graded units in research. So what do you need to get into a Bio 199 lab? So first, before you can do anything, you must complete the prereqs. So the prereqs for Bio 199 is Bio 94 and Bio 194S, the online safety and ethics course. So before you can be cleared to take Bio 199, these must be completed. So a faculty member is also required. So basically, it's someone whose field of research interests you specifically. Um, and you need to have a general idea of the faculty's research and expertise. And you will actually have to directly contact them to see if there's an availability or an opening in their lab. So where do you go to find a faculty mentor? There's three main ways to go about this. The first one is to go onto the Bio199 research dashboard, and there you'll see a full list of all of the faculty members that are currently performing undergraduate research here. Um, you'll also see a brief description of what their lab specifically does and how you as an undergrad will be able to assist them. They'll also have contact information, so it is there that you can find their emails to directly email them. Um, the next way that you can find a faculty mentor is actually from previous classes that you've taken. So whether it's a professor or a TA, they provide a good opportunity for you to reach out and directly establish a connection with a professor um, through that previous course. And next is also networking. So whether it's friends or mentors or upperclassmen that you know that are currently in Bio 199 labs, they can also let you know if there's an availability in their lab um, and hopefully that lab will spark your interest. So how should you contact a faculty sponsor? So step one, you do need to research and gather a short list of faculty members. Um, so find three to five labs on that research dashboard that we were talking about earlier um, and directly email them uh, asking if there is an availability in their lab. Now you may not always receive a response, so please keep in mind, you may not be accepted into your first choice. The Bio 199 spots may already be filled there may not be projects available. And in addition, you're also competing with other undergraduate students as well. So just make sure to do your research on these labs of interest and kind of relay your passions into the email that you send them and hopefully that they should give you a response soon. So step two, reach out and contact. So this is that email now. So be professional, express interest. You really do need to treat Bio 199 as a job and ask yourself why you are interested in this lab and explain that in the email. And after, hopefully kindly ask for an opportunity to meet in person and discuss a potential availability in their lab. Step three, have materials ready on your end. So in your email, make sure that you're including a first and last name, your student ID number, and um, a contact email that they can reach out to you to. In addition, it's a good idea to add a resume or a cover letter. So resumes are lists of your relevant coursework and experiences, and cover letters kind of tell them why you are a good fit for their lab. So congratulations, you're in, you've been accepted into Bio 199, you've sent that email um, and you've interviewed with that PI. So now what do you do next? So once you're in, you do need to know the process. So you are going to work directly with your mentor to submit a project proposal. So you're gonna do all of this through that research dashboard. But before you start anything, it's very important to recognize if that lab that you're joining is a packet A or a packet B. So with packet A, you're dealing with non-human subjects. So this is lab or bench settings. The packet itself is pretty condensed. All you need is to submit a proposal, get a faculty signature, and sign a waiver or a liability form. So next is packet B. Packet B is a little bit longer, so it's very important that you start this earlier. 
but basically you will be working with actual human subjects, so it will be in a clinical setting. So most packet B research studies actually will take place at the UCI Medical Center. So for this, you will have to submit a proposal, get a faculty signature, and fill out that waiver liability form um, just like packet A. However, you're also going to have to do additional trainings and fill out a help form, um, which you can get through the Student Health Center. So they will have to clear you as well. So how long are the packets good for? So once you submit a proposal, the packet is good until the end of spring quarter the following year. So for instance, Say you submit a packet in fall of 2020. That packet will be good until the end of spring quarter in 2021. So if you wanted to do research for summer session 2021, you will have to submit a new packet for summer session one. Um, and then that will be good for the following year. So you won't need to submit another packet in fall. However, once that packet has expired at the end of spring quarter, you must submit a new one. In addition to submitting these proposals, you will also have to fill out summary reports at the end of each quarter. So these will be completed again at the end of each quarter and it kind of sums up what you've done in the past quarter and how you've participated in your lab. So what are the packets due each quarter? So for fall, winter, spring, and summer session 10, just like any regular course, they are due by Friday of week two at 12 p.m. For summer session one or summer session two, they are due Friday of week one at 12 p.m. This is very important because to be eligible for Bio 199, you must be cleared by the BioSci Student Affairs Office. If you miss these deadlines, you will not be able to participate in Bio 199 for that quarter. Now, please keep in mind, the packet Bs are a little bit longer, so please do not wait to get those started. The Student Health Center appointments do fill up fast, so make sure to get going on that. Also, I did want to provide you all with an update on how to enroll for Bio 199 for summer session of 2020. I do know that there is a bit of confusion about the policies in place for research over the next few months, but I did want to assure you all that Bio 199 enrollment is still proceeding as usual. However, your PI will be in charge of designating your at-home responsibilities at this time. So for enrollment, there are three websites that you do need to know. The first one is the undergraduate research page. As you can see, this page provides you all of the information regarding Bio 199 general requirements, program policies, uh, along with instructions on how to enroll in Bio 199 over the academic year and how to find uh, faculty sponsors as well. Now, most importantly, this page will provide you a link that will direct you to the summer 2020 enrollment instructions. Um, I did also provide them as the second link on the slide. But as you see, if you go to this page, it will show up with the Summer Session 2020 instructions. So before I go over the instructions of how to actually enroll in BioSci 189, I did want you all to please pay attention to the deadlines. These are hard deadlines, and all of the tasks that I am about to describe must be completed before these dates. For instance, if you wish to enroll in Summer Session 1, the deadline to complete all of your paperwork will be Friday of week one at noon. This is June 26th of this year. Um, and those same instructions follow for the 10 week summer session and summer session number two. Um, now, for how to actually enroll into BioSci 199, um, you will first have to log into your research dashboard to complete packet A or B after you have already been approved to join that respective lab by your PI. Once you complete your packet and have it signed by your PI, just like you would over the academic year, you will have to email that completed packet along with the independent study form, which can be found on the summer session website, which we will also go over here in a bit, to biosci199 at uci.edu. As you can see in step number four, the subject line must be your name, ID number, and it must be titled Bio199 Submission. After about two to three business days, you will receive a confirmation email approving you to sign up for Bio 199. Once you have received that email, you do have to forward it along with two other documents, the same independent study form that you already sent to the BioSci 199 email, along with the enrollment form, which again will be found on the Summer Session website, and you have to send that to summersession at uci.edu. Once you have sent that in, um, summer session will be contacting you to finalize the payment. 
Now, I did want to stress, it is very important to not provide any financial information in these emails. Once Summer Session has approved you to sign up for Bio199 after receiving that forwarded email, they will reach out to you for payment. In addition, there are also instructions on how to sign up for BioSci 197 and 198. These instructions are very similar to BioSci 199. However, you will have to complete a form provided by your program instructor. You will not be filling out packet A or packet B. After that, you will follow the same instructions detailed before. As in, you will take that form and the request for independent study form and email that to BioSci 199. Once you have received confirmation from that, you will forward that email to Summer Session, and then they will finalize all the details of payment with you. Now again, going back to the slides, we've covered the undergraduate research page, the undergraduate enrollment instructions, which was that PDF I just showed you, and now I did want to bring to your attention the Summer Session Office Forms page. This will provide you all of the forms that you will need for Bio199 enrollment for Summer Session 2020. As you can see, going onto this page, you will see the two forms that you need. You will need the BioSci Independent Research Instructions form, and you will also need the enrollment form. Summer Session will require both of these and the forwarded email to approve you to sign up for Bio199. Now, I know this is a lot of information that you all are having to take in, so I did want to provide you a condensed summary of what we've gone over um, for your review. So again, the first thing that you'll have to do is complete the packet A or packet B after you've been accepted into the lab and fill out the BioSci independent research form. Second, you'll have to email these completed forms to BioSci199 at UCI with the subject line as your name, ID number, and Bio199 submission. After two to three days, you'll receive an email confirmation approving you to sign up for Bio199. And lastly, you'll have to forward that email and attach the summer session enrollment form in the BioSci199 independent research form to summer session at uci.edu. Summer session will contact you for payment. There is one last thing that I wanted to cover before continuing on with this presentation. If you are graduating at the end of summer session, you do not need to recomplete packet A or B. If you are graduating at the end of summer, all you have to do is email BioSci199 at uci.edu and request to enroll in the same research lab that you were approved for um, of the 2019 to 2020 academic year. In that same email, you will provide the BioSci independent research form as well, and then all of the instructions will be exactly the same beginning at number two. So when should you start Bio199 and what is the commitment like? So generally we advise for students to participate in 199 after their second year. So you do wanna focus on your lower division courses before joining. So get through OCHEM, get through Bio98, 99. Um, those really set the foundation for your upper division courses so they are crucial for your education. The next thing to be aware of is the commitment. Research is a part-time job. You are dedicating a certain amount of hours that you will be expected to fulfill. So for instance, say your research lab requires you to fulfill four units of research. One unit is equivalent to three to four hours a week. So four, four units of research is equivalent to around 16 hours a week. So please keep this in mind when you're speaking with your professor about how many hours you are available to dedicate to that lab. And most importantly, you just wanna make sure that you're passionate about the lab that you're joining, about the lab that you're committing a certain amount of time to each quarter. Now, I know Bio199 has a lot of different components. Um, so if you have any questions, feel free to contact a peer academic advisor for the School of Biological Sciences. These are actual students who have experience with research and will happily answer any questions you have. In addition, you can also reach out to our new online chat system at the BioSci homepage, where you can get in touch with an actual academic counselor and they can help answer any questions that you have. Have a nice day and have fun with Bio199.